Art is the reshaping of reality by man to present it in an understandable way. As the artist recreates the world around him, it is shaped by how he sees it and what he believes in. The Indian artist did not attempt to depict only the material reality around him. He wished to share the complete experience of the moment not just the photographic presentation of the shapes around him beauty for the indian artist has been a reflection of the glory of god in fact for the ancient artist the experience of beauty the ecstasy on seeing nature or art which is truly beautiful has been considered as akin to brahmanand or the final bliss Join us on this journey into the heart of the Indian tradition of painting. Come with us to the gorge of the Vaghora River where Ajanta was created, to the courts of the Mughals and the Deccani sultans. Journey with us through the deserts of Rajasthan and the icy lands of Ladakh and Lahore Spiti. In the verdant south and in the gentle hills of the north, experience the compassionate view of life that is enshrined in indian painting in medieval times india was renowned for its fabled wealth its spices and textiles for many centuries european nations looked for a sea route which could connect them directly to india this was finally discovered by vasco da gama from portugal he sailed around the cape of good hope in 1498 and reached calicut on the coast of kerala this began a long period of seafaring trade between Europe and Asia gradually many of the lands of Asia were colonized by the european powers of portugal spain france and england even while the kingdom of vijayanagar flourished in the mainland of the deccan a small and sunny land on the western coast of india began a very different cultural encounter goa is a land where many cultures met this prosperous state has been cherished and ruled by different kings over the centuries goa which was a part of the vijayanagar empire for almost a hundred years till 1470 was conquered by the portuguese in 1510 for the next 450 years the distant land of portugal ruled goa and here was created a unique blend of indo portuguese culture in goa I think the deepest encounter between the western civilization and the indian civilization took place uh in modern times. Uh, you must remember that in the context of india uh, the british came 200 years after the portuguese and whereas it was a handful of them in india for 170 years in the whole of india here was a, a tiny little bit of uh, india uh with the portuguese for almost 500 years so the encounter went very very deep and and there was de definitely a kind of synthesis that took place 
On 25th November 1510, the Portuguese conqueror Afonso de Albuquerque stood at this spot and watched the sea battle between his forces and those of Adil Shah, the then ruler of Goa. When his ships won the battle and Goa on the western coast of India was finally his, he vowed to make on this spot a beautiful church which stands still today, Our Lady of the Rosary. On the banks of the Mandovi River, the Portuguese built the magnificent capital city of Old Goa or Velha Goa. Old Goa became one of the most important ports in India. It also became the nerve center of the Portuguese Empire in Asia. Portuguese commercial interests and religious orders covering the area from the east coast of Africa to China and Japan were centered here. This was a great commercial center. Whether it was the precious stones and spices which went to Europe, or whether it was the Arabian horses which the Portuguese traders sold to the Indian kingdom of Vijayanagar, it all went through here. The relationship between Portugal and Goa was not restricted to commerce alone. The Portuguese made this picturesque coastal land their home. They brought with them a new religion and culture. They believed it was their duty to convert the local people to Christianity and to show them what they believed was the true path. The Portuguese were filled with a fiery zeal to establish their faith all over the world. They made huge houses of God in this land. The idea was to inspire and to convert the local people through awe and grandeur, through power and majesty. Within a few square kilometers, many magnificent churches were built in Old Goa. Amidst its waving palms, Old Goa had the largest number of churches of any city in Asia. Back in the 16th century, Old Goa was one of the bustling metropolises of the world. It had a population of over 200,000. It was known as the Rome of the East. Within a small space, there were so many churches here that there are on record letters which were written to the King of Portugal by the priests here, saying that their choirs and our choirs, their bells and our bells, there is cacophony here. The Basilica of Bon Jesus was built by the Jesuit order in 1585. The church is dedicated to the Bon Jesus or the good, the infant Jesus. The body of St. Francis Xavier, who died on the 3rd of December, 1552, is kept here, still miraculously intact. St. Francis Xavier left Portugal to come to India and to the Far East. He devoted himself to the cause of the people here 
and died in that service. He was canonized by the church in Rome as a saint and here in Goa he was adopted as the patron saint of the people. In St. Francis Xavier, the people of Goa saw someone who represented the church and was also one of them. Around the casket containing the holy relics of the saint are paintings depicting scenes from his life. It is paintings of Saint Francis Xavier which form the finest body of art produced by Goan Christian painters. The religious ideas came here from Europe, but the churches of Goa were made by Indian hands and quite often transformed by the Indian heart. The craftsmen who made these churches had their own images in their mind. You see in the Basilica of Bon Jesus, the saints are made standing on lotuses, much the way that Hindu deities are made. Indian craftsmen made beautiful altar pieces which represent the confluence of Indian motifs and those of Europe. The message of the Lord was brought to the newly converted people through paintings which adorned the churches. Within these magnificent houses of God, a great treasure of religious art was created. Paintings were brought from Lisbon and from Rome. These were used to teach Indian painters new subjects and a new manner of painting. When it came to painting, they brought with them the art of the fresco uh, which was very much in vogue in, uh, in, in the Renaissance, in, uh, Renaissance churches in Europe and uh, painted canvases. In, in this case the original ones were brought and were ordered and produced by Italian schools, the famous Italian schools of art of those days the schools of art which produced people like uh, like M Michelangelo and Bernini and uh, uh, all the the painters of the Renaissance. So they introduced uh, um, all this, all these aspects of culture, from music to painting, uh, and and craftsmanship and construction. Here in Goa, European techniques and materials of painting were introduced a long time before the British set up their first art schools in India. The Say Cathedral was completed in 1652. The paintings around the altars are a fine example of paintings in the churches of Goa.
the paintings of Goa bring to us a reflection of traditions of painting in Europe. This was the period of the Baroque in Western art. A style characterized by drama and heightened emotion. We see here, in the paintings of Old Goa, reflections of the Baroque and the earlier Mannerist styles of European painting. The artists used colour, form and diagonal lines to make the paintings realistic and dynamic. Dramatisation became the principle of the paintings. The figures are starkly drawn out in a dramatic play of light and the contrast of dark shadows. We see the expression of the suffering and passion of Christ and the Apostles. The Church of St. Francis of Assisi, built in 1527, stands in the main square of Old Goa in the same compound as the Say Cathedral. Here we see some of the finest paintings on wood panels depicting portraits of saints. The ideas and stories of Christianity were new to the Indian artist. However, the feeling of reverence towards a God who loved all of humanity was not new to him. While he laboured with the new mediums of painting and with subjects which came from another land, the artist found himself at home in the depiction of gentleness and love upon the face of Christ. Despite all the differences in the history and culture of Europe and India, the essence of religious feelings was the same. In Christian art, the feelings that were expressed towards Jesus Christ and towards the saints were exactly the same as the reverence of Indians towards their gods. The convent and church of Santa Monica, dedicated to the mother of St. Augustine, was constructed in 1627. This is the oldest and largest nunnery in Asia and is active till today. The convent was once completely covered with the most beautiful frescoes. Unfortunately, most of them have been covered with plaster and whitewashed. Some paintings, which still retain their original glory, remain in the chapel of the convent. The colourful paintings bring alive 
Stories from the Holy Bible. For the first time in Indian paintings, we see the expression of the beliefs of Christianity. The paintings depict the miracles of faith. As in the ancient Indian tradition of art, we see gentleness and overflowing love. Tucked away in the quiet of the basement of the nunnery of the Santa Monica are some of the finest mural paintings of Goa. As in the Hindu faith, in Christianity, the lives of saints serve as a luminous example of all that is good and beautiful. It was a rare and fruitful confluence of different traditions. By 1545, we already have an official record that an Indian painter was being used to make fine portraits of the Portuguese viceroys. A great achievement, considering the fact that the medium of oil painting was entirely new to the Indian painter. These are some of the earliest portraits that were painted in India. The portraits are painted in the styles that prevailed in Europe. We see the mastery of a new technique and a new manner of painting by the Indian artist. Father Rudolf Aquaviva and Father Montserrat of St. Paul's College in Old Goa were invited to the court of the Mughal Emperor Akbar. They stayed as guests of the Emperor in Fatehpur Sikri for many years. They carried with them portraits and paintings on European themes which were presented before Akbar. These were among the earliest European influences which came to the mainstream of the Indian tradition of painting. European painting was different from the paintings of India, both in its medium and techniques and in its philosophic approach. Goa's was the first meaningful and complete experience of the Indian artist with the styles of European painting. In the centuries to come, we see European influences coming to Indian painters through the schools of art that were set up by the British in the 19th century. We see how Indian painters assimilated these influences and the impact that they had on the course of Indian painting.
Under the Portuguese, the Indian painter learned to paint in the realistic manner of the West, with paints taking care to depict light and shade and perspective in a photographic manner. Whereas his tradition had taught him to present the sublime peace of Brahmanand, or eternal bliss, the new tradition brought the poignant portrayal of the pain in human life. The medieval history of Goa is a unique chapter in the history of India. In Indian paintings too, this was the time when the artist tried to adopt an altogether different style and approach in painting. In the best of old Goa's paintings, we see gentle and sublime expression. Here was a true confluence of the art of India and Europe. Maya, 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 Maya. 